just so. Okay, so Alice, I think we'll draw this, and I think there's lots of good white spaces for us to use to harness the light of the page, especially the roof of this house. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, there's all sorts of fun lines that we could get into, um, as well as the texture on the volcano in the back. And what I find interesting about it is it's outside of our western aesthetic in terms of the style I, how do you say that but you know what i mean it is it is very different uh in terms of its aesthetic and what's going to happen when i start drawing it i don't know yeah so we could definitely say that it's outside the western tradition of art mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. probably the best way to say that um i'm nearly positive this is by hiroshige um and as far as what's going to happen when you draw it or when I draw it, that's um, that remains to be seen. But I wouldn't try to willpower it into any, you know, particular cultural or art historical um, time period or place. I think just right. Yeah. Just... If I tried to be Asian, it would be, well, mm -hmm. they call it cultural appropriation these days. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it would be very stilted. So yeah. I'm going to try not to try to be Asian. Okay. One, yeah, be Alice. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, so I'm drawing, I'm, I'm sort of, I just got back from Chile Friday. Oh, congratulations. Thank wow. you very much. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a grand trip. And I just got back to like my workspace here in DC and I'm sort of um, cleaning the closet with art supplies. So I'm using a combination of graphite sticks and pencils. Um, and let's just see how far I get with with all of that. And uh, I am sketching with a, a litho crayon. Oh, wow. OK, cool. I know that it's. It's an old, old habit that I picked up while I was at the Marshute School. Sam got me doing it because then if I had a drawing I liked, he helped transfer it onto litho stones because he had all those litho stones at that time i don't know yeah. what happened to all those litho stones but they were amazing so you were doing you were doing lithographic drawings back then well he had in his house in his studio uh and i don't know when he when when that ended uh but or if it ended but he had a uh lithographic press the old old school kind with these giant beautiful limestone blocks hmm. smooth treated surfaces yeah and he taught um some of us how to i mean i never actually used the press because it was a monster but yeah. uh he taught us how to draw either you could draw directly on the stone but boy that talk about being you know, it's it's like you don't want to make a wrong line when you're drawing on the stone because once it's there, it is there. Yeah, uh, I believe it. But he also uh, what uh, had perfected transferring drawings from paper onto stone. He used a uh, you'd wet down you wet down everything and and treat it and etch it uh, etch the stone and then. Um, lay the soak sheet down on top of it and run it through the press at with a lot of pressure and you know sandwich between two limestone blocks and yeah. the grease from the pencil would be expelled onto the stone the stone would take up the drawing and this was a technique I think Leo taught it to him because Leo did it that's how a lot of Leo's drawings are preserved as lithographs is through that yeah. transfer technique yeah so anyway, Sam knew how to do it. And so he, if we had a drawing that we had done, not on stone, that was really special and wanted to preserve it as a print, um, he would help help us do that. So that was just a little something extra. Wow. Yeah, kind of amazing. Yeah. So that yeah, yeah, that is that is amazing. And I mean, I um I never got to really get into printmaking so much but I do one of um one of the artists that I mentor is a printmaker primarily 
And it's been really interesting working with them on the drawing side of that process. Um, but yeah, it's a whole world printmaking. Oh gosh, yes. And so, oh gosh, yes. <laughs> so intricate. Yeah, I mean, very intricate. Honestly, without if Sam had the full setup, so you couldn't, you know, how could you not give it a try? Uh, but yeah. was it was not something to be lightly undertaken. Um, and he, in fact, had a, 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 for, a small fortune in stones collected <laughs> over time. And I think he, you know, uh, as I said, I can't remember if Leo still had a press at his uh, studio. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, so that was that was kind of like an extra wrinkle. So. As a result, I got in the habit of drawing. And the nice thing about a litho crayon for drawing is it's soft enough that you can go uh, deep or 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 light or yeah, you can just it's really very malleable to to your touch. That's great. Yeah, I, I have um one when I was studying at my shoots as a master's student, one of my classmates um was drawing with a lithographic crayon and i think they had had some experience um working with the stones and printing a little bit um but yeah they would use it and i never got around to it but they they really swore by it um yeah, yeah well as i said it, it's just sort of a drawing habit that i developed mm. And uh, and then I just kind of I I like it better than charcoal. Mm, yeah. And sometimes I use pencil, but what's really nice about this is it's almost as responsible responsive as as a brush. Oh yeah, then I have to try one. One. <laughs> I definitely have to try one then. Yeah. Do you uh, does it smudge the way that charcoal does? Does it risk yeah. smudging? Uh, no. not so easily. So I'm not much of a smudger as a result of that. Um, I'm I'm not a smudger. I mean, more for like, I'm always worried with graphite and charcoal. Right. If it's too soft, when I transport it, it'll, it'll smudge. Exactly. And this, with this, it's just not a, a not a thing. That's, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Um, Alice, we've been joined by Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. It's it's um rainy here. Where are you me. where are you zooming in from, Mary? I'm just outside of New York City. Okay, so you have rain too, yeah. Yeah, and where are you? I'm in DC right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's probably the same weather thing. pattern. Yeah. The West Coast. Yeah, just yeah. I'm in Connecticut, Mary, and it's are you? Here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, where are You're you? In Connecticut? I'm just I'm in Greenwich. I'm in Weston. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. <laughs> Small world. Oh, perfect. Um, anyways, yeah. Mary, did you join our, our session uh, a month ago? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. So you know the drill. We're just having a good yes. time drawing this yes, winter scene. Great. That's okay, what great. I need. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I work too much. So it's, it's not, I have to do this to kind of get myself to um, sit down and take it easy a little bit in front of the you know just do something uh, with my art you know, so. yeah yeah use a different part of your brain a different part of your yeah your, your body even um I totally, yeah I totally that was that. really nice um so yeah Mary what, what are you just curious what are you drawing or what are you using today it doesn't have to be a um I'm just using some um pencils I, right. I got here a little late so I, I no worries if there's something you guys talked about with the materials but um it's like a I'm, I'm using a soft pencil right now and I have some other pencils and I have a, even a charcoal pencil so I guess I'll try that great yeah yeah drawing I think um Alice took an online class with me on watercolor uh, earlier this year in October. And that was a pretty intensive 
uh, five weeks of me watercoloring and doing other practice with watercolor and such. And I've been really happy to get back to just drawing, just pencils, mm -hmm. don't worry about color, don't worry about all that stuff. Hello, Candy. Hey, great to see you. Nice to see you too. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. <laughs> no worries. No worries at all. We've already begun, but the image okay. is up. And Candy, you are you are um, you already know the drill. Yeah, I know the drill, and this is a um, uh, what's the Japanese painter famous one? It's not Hokusai, who oh, I think Hokusai. is the one slightly more well known than this one. This guy's name is Hiroshige. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's well known too. <laughs> yeah, pretty well known. They're both reasons. <laughs> one and two. Um, but yeah, I just figured, I don't know, a winter scene. I'll actually show you at the end of the session what I was originally going to put up. And then this morning, I decided at the last minute to change it to this. But I did want to do a winter scene with everyone. How much time are, are we uh, using for this uh... Yeah, we have the whole hour. I mean, so it's two sixteen. Um, where on for us on the East Coast? Uh, I think all of it. Candy, you're East Coast, right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. It's oh, uh, two sixteen. Yeah. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, we'll go until three o'clock. And you know, use the time if you want. If you work quickly and you want to do two quicker drawings with this time, that's great. If you want to spend a little bit longer on the one, that's Fine, that's probably what I'm gonna do this afternoon. And actually here, I could spotlight this now. So yeah, like I was talking about, I went through a long period, not a long period, but an intensive period of doing watercolor earlier this year. So coming back to drawing has been really nice for me. And I actually don't, I sort of want to leave myself open to drawing in new ways or every time I switch back and forth between painting and drawing, I like to, I don't know, I like there to be something fresh about it. So I'm not I can't really describe my process too much right now, but I am using this graphite stick. Mm. Uh, this is a tiny, tiny half of a graphite stick that got broken, but it's a soft graphite stick and I'm kind of just blocking in some major things. And then I think I'll go in a little deeper with a 4B pencil and, um, articulate things just a little bit more but I can't really say that I I, I have like a, a process I'm kind of just playing um which after you know after five weeks of watercolor and then I kind of took a a few weeks away from too much art because I was camping and backpacking and hiking and traveling and now that I'm in one place and I'm going to be here for a little bit of time, five weeks, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, I will, I'm kind of excited to let new approaches to drawing fill my artistic cup, if you will. And um, yeah, just we'll see with some regular practice this this holiday season, what what comes out.
Now, that being said, even though I said, I just stated that I don't really know my process right now. If you do see me <laughs> doing something, I'm always happy to talk about it and try to articulate what exactly I'm trying to accomplish with whatever particular marks I'm making at the moment. Um, I don't come to these with a lesson planned, but I do want it to be a learning opportunity for you if if it can be.
All right, so something that I'm coming up on right now is how to navigate the texture of the front of the volcano, particularly above the house, along with the texture of the trees with snow on them. So I'm taking my eraser and sort of carving out some patches of light in the background shading that I put on the face of that mountain. And I'm gonna see if I can just, with some looser, lighter lines, maybe evoke the shape of some of these snow-covered branches. And I'm not, I'm not copying the shape or even counting the number, really. I'm just trying to find the, the pockets of light behind the tree and see what shapes I could form out of it that sort of behave like the ones that I see out there. But I'm by no means counting and really trying to nail the shape. Let's see. Nick, I wanted to ask a question about the direction of the light. Yeah, okay. It, it's almost as if that wasn't as important to the artist because I see a sense, I have a sense it's coming from the left, and yet it also seems like it's coming from the right when you look at the It's It's series. difficult. Did he even have a point of view on that when he did it? Yeah. What do you think? I, so... This, to me, this light that I'm pointing at with my cursor mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. to me, like you just said, indicates that there is light coming from the left. And now that we look at it, that I'm looking at it, if I look at this part of the sky, um, compared to this part of the sky on the right side of the mountain, see how the red comes up a little higher? I feel like the band of light between the blue and the red is choked. It's narrower here mm -hmm. and a little wider here. Um, but yeah, when I get down to the foreground of the house, none of this seems to correspond to that. And I don't know, I'm not certain. When, when I see these lights, these white marks on these trees, I see it as snow on the tree. I, it doesn't indicate necessarily a light source to me, but I agree. This isn't about light source or the light is harnessed differently than maybe if we were looking at a, a Turner, for example, which usually has a very concentrated um, area of light on it. Is that notion of light source directing your drawing, Alice? Well, it's something I don't like to get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because it causes trouble if you don't. But I, it almost seemed to me as if that was unimportant to this artist's uh, yeah. vision. 
a, a, a little differently maybe than what we all he's uh, it may be that it was a more timeless still kind of 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 um mood or vision that he was capturing or yeah i i think i i think it could be a lot of things maybe their sensibility around light their you know their own way of comprehending light dealing with light mm -hmm. isn't pronounced in the same way as some of the westerners are like monet and turner for example that's what i was thinking to myself as i looked at this yeah and it may be about maybe there's some play in the composition you know maybe the shape of the roof of this house how maybe it, it mirrors the shape of the volcano in the back Mm -hmm. how these lights of snow dripping on the mountains sort of continue into the snow covered branches of the trees on the right side it may be about textures and shapes more than it is about light mm -hmm. um I, I i can't say that i've studied this extensively but i know there's a lot of balance involved in the compositions of um of these Japanese prints. So instead of maybe considering light, maybe consider why is this house offset? Why, what does this boat here do to the composition? What happens if you don't include the boat in your drawing? Um, yeah, it, it may be about order and balance more than it is about light. And also, the last thing I'll say, if this could be, we can't really tell how sunny this day is. And if it's somewhere between, you know, a partly cloudy day and the weather we're all having on the East Coast right now, if you look out the window, there isn't exactly that much light source either. Um, you know, the cloud, at least in DC, the, the cloud cover is pretty thick. There's no texture in the sky. It is a wall of gray that I'm looking at out my window right now. And to, to varying degrees of how thick that cloud cover might be, it'll affect how little shadows you see in buildings, cars outside, whatever you have outside your window. Um, so yeah, there's all, there's all sorts of, of reasons why um, why the light source is not as prominently uh, pronounced in this in this drawing.
Okay, so right now for me, since I've got most of the things in place and they're starting to develop the different elements, the house, um, it's funny, you know, this boat, I mentioned it earlier, but I am definitely overlooking it. Um, but other than that, I think right now I am trying to bring balance to the different values. So I have the bottom of the water here where it is more most dark blue and the bottom left this dark. I know I need to make some of these areas in the mountain a little bit darker to sort of match the, the strength of what's happening down, down here. So I'm gonna, once I get a little bit of this Boat man in here. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna take my graphite stick back out. And, um, work on developing those shadows a little bit more.
I think something I'm noticing now when I'm drawing is whenever I've encountered these woodblock prints from Japan, I always felt that there was a um, there's, a there's a flatness to them. They have this way of flattening the image, um, expressing depth through you know illusion of foreshortening or um, you know different objects being proportional in size to one another. But because there are so many flat shapes, I am finding myself as I'm drawing this, trying to resist that. When I look at all of this texture up in the mountain, I find myself trying to embellish certain contours to try and get away from the total, the total flatness that can kind of be a, you know, a, an impression that we get from looking at some of these, these woodblock prints. All right, everyone, we're coming up on just a little bit under 10 minutes. Um, here, I'm actually, I'm gonna, that will stay there for us, right? Okay.
There we go. That was strange. My uh, my desk camera disappeared on me for a second there, but it's back. All right, everyone. Just about four minutes left. So whatever finishing touches you need to make to bring balance to your image, I'm trying to accentuate this right contour of the mountain right now just to make it really dark and add a little dimension to my mountain. But yeah, whatever part you're working on or whatever, maybe take a step back for a quick moment, look at the whole image, see what you could develop, what you could darken, what you could articulate to bring greater balance to your image, to greater balance to the whole. Um, I think overall drawing this, yeah, I found maybe one one nifty little takeaway for me is that in, in, in instead of coloring in something so completely, if I embellish certain contours, um, that'll help give me a little dimension and depth to the, the image or the object. I think I was more successful in certain places than others, but for example, right real quick, I'm going to embellish just the right side of this rooftop to help separate this part of the roof from the area behind it. I think this triangle I completely failed on, but you know, c'est la vie. You can't, you can't win them all. And maybe a little bit of the darkness in the sky. Okay, everyone. So quickly, just um, a couple last thoughts. I'll leave the image up while you work and finish this up. But this is the last, uh, well, the only the second, but also the last of 2023 of these masterwork practice hours. We will be continuing this next year, January 7th, whatever that Sunday is. Here, let me get my calendar so I don't mislead anyone. But I want to say off the top of my head, January 7th will be the next one. So be sure to keep an eye out for the registration link. Yeah, January 7th, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, registration links will go out in the next Marshoots newsletter or my own newsletter. So be sure to sign up for those if you haven't already, but I imagine all three of you have because you are here with me now. Um, Marshoots and I, we, we are happy to make this a resource available for any artist that wants to come and participate. Um, if you're getting something out of this, consider making a small donation to the Leo Marshoot School. I'll include a link here in the chat. Whatever you're willing to give, um, if you are getting something out of this series, um, always helps to support the Marshoot School where all of this lovely, lovely knowledge um, and practice comes from. And then also with the Marshoot School, I will be, if, if any of this drawing stuff was useful to you, helpful seeing me draw, I am offering an online class with the Marshoot School that will begin in March of next year. So still plenty of time um, and registration for that will also be uh, available via the newsletters, Marshoots's and my own. All right. So with that, I'd love to just take a peek at what you all have made. If you don't mind holding it up to the to your cameras. Candy, also, I didn't get to ask, are you watercoloring this or are you drawing this? Okay, you're muted, but I'm gonna assume watercolor because you've done only watercolor classes with me. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah, it's watercolor. It's wonder I really love wonderful. doing this stuff in watercolor, so. And this is an interesting a thing to try in watercolor. 
since, you know, um, the way th these artists did their block printing is kind of remarkable, you know? Very remarkable, yeah. And a tedious, tedious process, I imagine. You know, all of those colors just get their own block of, um, of, of paint. Nice work, Mary. Nice big sketch pad you got there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and You're beautiful mountain map. Yeah, I love the one side left light and the um the the other side made a little bit darker. That's a that's a really nice that's really nice on the um beautiful. Nice. My camera yeah. doesn't seem to be getting these lines. At least the image I see is all choppy. See if I can oh it's better. Okay. Almost better. Yeah. You see what I'm, it's doing? It's making things pixelated. So whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining me. Um, yeah. This was fun. And um, I look forward to doing another one with you all in January. Oh. And keep an eye out for our newsletters, mine or Marshutz's, for all of this lovely programming and, and you know, resources to practice that we provide. And beyond that, if I don't talk to any of you for the rest of the year, have a great holiday season and a happy new year. Same to you, Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you so much for doing this today. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care, everyone.